Tonight on Join East Prime, a major first for Ghana as the first Volkswagen vehicle assembled in Ghana is outdoored. The assembly and ultimately the production of VW vehicles in the country. There were many who expressed doubts about the feasibility of such an assembly plant being established in Ghana. And there were those who, for narrow partisan considerations, describe this announcement as nothing but a hoax which would never see the light of day. Anger as minority in parliament threatened defense minister with a vote of censure over the deployment of military men in some voter registration centers across the country. Joy News blows uh, the laid off a scheme through which state enterprises Produce buying companies are fleeing cocoa farmers of thousands of cities by Justin Wayne's skilled killing. Once the readings, I know that cocoa is supposed to be weighed at 64 kilograms. No, I weigh cocoa here at 67 kilograms. We we'll build up to our latest hotline documentary, Missing Kilos and in Business. VW assures their operations will not collapse the local automobile industry as it unveils its first batch of locally assembled vehicles in Ghana. We're not going to take their business. We are open to work with them and we're going to transfer technology and also knowledge to them. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. My the news comes to you live on our digital terrestrial TV because we are free to wear on Go TV channel 144 and DSTV channel 421. As we begin with ranking member on Parliament's Defence and Interior Committee, James Agalga, who is insisting the Defence Minister's response is unjustified. He says there is more than enough evidence in the public domain that voter intimidation is happening. He says the RECSEC directive banning the busing of people in Banda to registration centres is illegal because the nearest polling centre is about 14 kilometres away. The demand for evidence even in the face of pictorial evidence, and this is the media is awash with the um, evidence I'm talking about, it's, it's most regrettable. You will see the pictures clearly, which depict soldiers dressed in combat gear with armored vehicles, right, preventing Ghanaians from crossing over to a registration center to register. And you say that is not intimidation? You see the general secretary of the NDC, Asiyo Dunketia, in an open confrontation with the soldiers. Mm. I have the pictures here. Yeah, you see you know, the we, pictures we, for yourselves. We, 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 so, so we've in, seen those in, videos. In, 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 the face okay. of, in the face of the evidence we have, and this is too common to find, if you ask that, evidence be provided again i think it's most unfortunate look rexec is not a law unto itself rexec cannot take a decision that contradicts the constitution or oh, rexec cannot take a decision which seeks to undermine the fundamental rights of citizens and what's the nature of the decision rexec uh, reached that Nobody should engage in the basin of uh, Ghanaians to go to um, the registration centers to uh, perform their civic obligations by getting their names onto the uh, voters' roll. Look, why? The, the, the circumstances, the people um, around the Banda area find themselves, is compelling enough for them to um, look for buses and and, and commute between where they live, their settlements, and the nearest uh, uh, registration center. I have been reliably informed that these are people who were displaced as a result of the construction of the buoy hydro uh, power project. So they have to relocate to very remote um, areas in the Banda uh, traditional area of the uh, uh, Bono region. And I'm told that the nearest registration center in most cases, it's up to 20 miles, 14 miles.
Defense Minister Dominic Nitti will is challenging former President Mahama to provide evidence of his claims that the military is being used to intimidate prospective voters in NDC strongholds, addressing the media in Parliament House to respond to a social media statement by the former president, Mr. Nitti will insisted the figures on registration so far don't support the claims. He says the former president got it all wrong and was misled. He, however, insisted the military has a responsibility to stop foreigners from entering the country and they will not they will do the needful vigorously. Let me put it on record that the government has not conceived, the government did not plan, the government has no intention, the government will not plan and will never have an intention of suppressing any potential voter who is a Ghanaian and who is qualified, who is, who is of sound mind and above 18 years to register. But let me go directly to the issues at hand whether the uh, armed forces were tasked to suppress voters. I would say no. As I said, there were incidences in one or two constituencies, notably K2 South and Aflao, K2 South and Banda. K2 South was self-inflicted. The NDC deliberately decided to mislead the people of K2 South to think that the military was only deployed into K2 South. Today, the figures coming out of K2 South, it's very clear that there is no voter suppression in any, K2, any part of K2 South. In fact, the military has not gone to any polling station in K2 South to suppress anybody from registering. Any qualified Ghanaian of sound mind and of the correct age who wants to register in K2 South or any part of the country has been allowed to register. And so, if the former president has any evidence, he should bring that evidence, and the Minister of Defense will act. We are calling on him to provide evidence. The allegation he's making, we want evidence of that allegation. Mr. Nitoul says in the Banda area, there is Regional Security Council directive prohibiting political parties from busing people to registration centers, which the military is enforcing. He accuses the NDC General Secretary, Asir Dunkitia, of breaching the directives. For him to use Banda as the example of what he calls voter suppression, therefore means that his briefing was wrong, he's intelligent, he's suspect, and it's been misled. Banda constituency has had problems since the beginning of the voter registration. And so their case is a very unique situation. In fact, if Ghanaians will remember, it was very unfortunate that an individual lost his life in the course of this registration in this very constituency. And so responsible as the Regional Security Council is, RESEC, they met the parties and decided to harmonize the area and bring peace to the people. They met them twice. The last meeting culminated into an agreement being signed between the parties. An agreement that stated that the parties must bring peace and have agreed to bring peace before, during and after the registration up to the December 7th. For any political party, whether MPP, NDC, CPP, to attempt to bars people as we saw the NDC General Secretary do in that particular unfortunate video was uncalled for, was not good, and should be condemned. And I rightly condemn it. Let's stay on politics, and because the New Patriotic Party has condemned the continuous attempts by the opposition in D.C. to sacrifice the country's national security and patriotism for their political gains. According to the governing party, the NDC has been identified to be masterminding the mobilizing of foreign nationals to register and take part in Ghana's renewal elections to warrant the electoral victories. The voter regional chairman of the NPP, Makafi Wenya, indicated unapproved routes al along the Ghana-Togo border in the K2 South constituency had increased 
from 43 to 150 in the course of the ongoing voter registration exercise, a manifestation of attempts by the NDC to import foreigners to participate in the exercise. He however adds that figures emanating from K2 South with regards to the ongoing voter registration exercise, which is less than 2012 and 2019 figures, vindicate the NPP stance that the 2012 voters register was bloated. Instructive to have a cursory look at some figures emanating from the ongoing registration exercise. If you have not started doing the analysis by yourself already, even before the exercise comes to a close, Let's look closely at the famous Ketu South. In 2016, there were 208 polling stations in Ketu South. The total registered voters stood at 149, 219. Today, there are 254 polling stations, and in spite of this, coupled with the security losses, the propaganda, mobilization, and deliberate busing of foreign nationals across the Ghana Togo border through the creation of 107 new unapproved routes. This is how the figures stand at the end of the fifth phase. Phase one, 17,399. Phase two, 15,817. Phase three, 27,694. Phase four, 25,458. On the good people of the voter region, particularly those in the diaspora, to stop swallowing the dirty NDC propaganda and to disregard the ugly noises and tribal tariffs. It is their strategy for solicited fans and undeserved sympathy whipping up tribal sentiments and emotions of the voters during registration periods and voting has been an old trick and stock in trade of the NDC. This is the time for the NDC to be accounted to the people of the voter region about their development impact, if any, in the region in the last eight years under Mahama. And the reason why the voter region to give them their support again. We are ready and prepared to compare the records. We are ready to take the media on a tour to all the old and the newly created and approved routes across the region with a special e emphasis on Ketu South. Thank you. The big question to us is why the NDC is always determined to sacrifice our national security and patriotism just to mobilize other nationals to participate in our internal politics and invest hugely in the mobilization of foreigners to register in this country of ours. The worst is the shameless use of tribal and ethnic public politics to achieve their purpose at all costs. A very dangerous trend that must be addressed before it blows in our face. It will interest you to note that at the beginning of the registration exercise, there were 43 unapproved routes in Ketu South alone. But today, additional 107 new routes have been created in Ketu South bringing a total of the known and approved routes to 150 in Kato South alone. And joining me via Zoom for more on this is Fred Kwame Asari, our voter regional correspondent. Fred, you've been touring some of the unapproved routes in that area. What more can you report? Yeah, uh, Aisha, very well, as you said, uh, I'm in military exercise here in the South uh, region, as you said. I should say that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the voter regional chairman of the NPP rebutted claims by the NDC that um, the, 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 uh, the NDC that the exercise during the voter region has not been peaceful and that there have been negations and molestations in the area. But then he mentioned that 
uh, in, be that to believe that there were some few uh, incidents of uh, violence, the exercise in general has been peaceful here in the North region. Uh, I monitored the registration site in some uh, parts of the uh, border, or in some border communities in the area. Uh, some of the centers I visited, I was told that by uh, NPC party agents that uh, they recognize that some people from neighboring Togo uh, uh, managed to cross over to come and register. And then what they mentioned was that they were given pieces of papers where they state that they are addressed and then name and then some other details that they should be to, uh, some other bio data that should be used in filling their uh, registration form. So there have been some reports uh, of that, for instance, in the Honita area where I visited last week, uh, some of the party agents mentioned that, that some people came to the center with their biodata written on paper. However, the challenge uh, these persons and then went through the right to see to ensure that their cards were not uh, issued to them. So that has been some of the incidents here in the Delta region with regards to the ongoing investigation. Fred Kwame Asari is our man on the ground. We'll still be monitoring events and stay on the Joy News channel for all the updates. Meanwhile, the Electric Commission is vowing to expunge the names of foreigners from voters' register. It has revealed it has so far exceeded its target of 15 million voters. There have been so far reports of security agencies preventing some persons from registering. The commission says only Ghanaians will be allowed to register as it wraps up the exercise the week, Jane Mensah is chairperson of the EC. And on behalf of the commission, I'd like to reiterate that our desire is to have a credible and clean register. And as a commission, we'll make sure that we have all the avenues and mechanisms in place to ensure that we have a clean and credible register. A register that reflects Ghanaians and Ghanaians only a register that reflects persons who are eligible and eligible only. And so as part of our process of cleaning, we would engage in all and use all mechanisms available to clean up the register to ensure that no one who is not qualified is, has his, his or her name in the register. So I believe that these are processes that we would inform you of, about as we go on, but it is our desire and our determination to ensure that our register is clean. I believe that if we go to our neighboring countries, we would not have the opportunity to register there and to be on their own. Those who must determine who leads this country must be Ghanaian. And as a commission, it is our duty to ensure that the register reflects Ghanaians and Ghanaians only, and Ghanaians who qualify to vote in the, in the election. So this is just, you know, to sum up that as we go on, these are some of the processes that we are engaged on and in. Our attention has been drawn to attempts by foreigners, and we call on stakeholders, citizens, and the police to be vigilant, and our citizens as well to be vigilant. I do not believe that we, any of us, can go to Togo or Cote d'Ivoire, Benin or Niger for that matter, and go and register to vote as vote, uh, citizens there. And therefore, it is the onus is on all of us as citizens to be vigilant. And we are asking Ghanaians, when you go to a registration center in the next few days and you see people who are not citizens trying to vote, can you please draw our attention to it so that we can take the necessary action? But whilst we recognize that some of them may have, you know, found their way on our register. We like to assure all Ghanaians that we as a commission will do our best to expound their names and to ensure that at the end of the day, only Ghanaians who are eligible find their names on their register. Dr. Bosman Asari says the commission has exceeded its target. Eight, 15 million, 117,438. There are no changes in terms of the positions of the regions, however, we notice that in percentage terms, some regions have increased whilst others have decreased. With the remaining days for the registration exercise, we expect to see the numbers increasing in the regions where the registrations are taking place in urban centers with a lot of people. On this final table, the four most populous regions are giving us almost 58% of all registered voters. 
that's the greater Accra region, the Ashanti region, the eastern and the central regions. In conclusion, what the, the final figure indicates is that we have exceeded our target of 50 million. We are very grateful to the people of Ghana for their cooperation in reaching this milestone. As we have indicated on several platforms, the Commission is deeply committed to registering all those who are qualified under CI 91, <laughs> CI 126 as amended and the, under the 1992 Constitution. So what the Commission is saying finally is that for all those who have been registered, the Commission is urging them to go to the registration centers in their electoral areas to register for their voters ID card. And we're still live on Joy News Prime. To the rest of our stories, with barely four months to election 2020, we ask, has the nation learned lessons from the bloody Iowasa was war gone by election with pockets of violence at registration centers? Here's a report from the Joy News Political Desk. <laughs> A bloody by election at Ayaso West of Ocon that saw masked operatives of the national security fire shots. You killed a man in his own house? In his own house? We will count on the cooperation of all and sundry for the ultimate objective of investigating the violence and related incidents. Ghana's democracy does not need vigilantes and vigilantism. Pressure mounted on political parties to disband vigilante groups. Parliament has since passed a regulation outlawing vigilantism and all forms of party militia. The Peace Council also got political parties to sign a code of conduct. But with barely four months to the polls, pockets of violence have already left many Ghanaians worried. Gunshots and the killing of a prospective voter is of concern. Any move that will be put in place to ensure that people are engaged, they are in gainful employment, they have something to do, will help us a lot. At this point in time, it's important for the police to be seen as fair. Uh, we are facing an imminent threat and danger. I want to take this opportunity to appeal to the youth of the Zongos to reject being used as pawn to perpetuate political violence. Your election headquarters will, in the coming days, focus on raising awareness on how to prevent electoral violence. Your election headquarters, President Ekufuadu says he's ready for the verdict of Ghanaians come December 7. The MPP flag bearer told journalists he's optimistic Ghanaians will renew his mandate on December 7. He spoke after successfully registering and obtaining his voter ID card in his hometown, Chebi, in the eastern region. The president was there with the first lady, Rebecca Ekufu, who also obtained her voter ID card. Is the time of my polling station yes, to register between the 1st and the 6th. I'm very impressed with the arrangements that the Electoral Commission has made for people to register in safety with all that is going on in the country and at the same time to do it in an efficient manner. I want to encourage everybody, we still have three days to go, with everybody who hasn't registered to try and register so that when the D-Day comes, you can also participate in choosing the government of your choice. What will be sad is to sit in the house and then other people take a decision for you. So it's better that everybody who has not yet registered should come out and register. It's a simple process. It's not complicated. So that's, that's my first thing. Right. So, President, thank you very much. And the second, I want to also add a little statement. In 2016, yes, I asked the people of Ghana to give me a chance and see my handiwork. Yes. They gave me the chance. So it is now for them to decide on how they see the world. I catch you once, when you show me here. When I show me here, when you have a bit of a house, you have a papa and a mother. You have a family, you have a mother. And you say, that's what I'm saying. You have a family, you have a 7th of December, you have a family, you have a family. 
National Peace Council says it's upset and outraged over some comments by political actors which seeks to undermine the effectiveness of their work. Board member of the council, Dr. Nana SKB Asante, wants political parties to refrain from bastardizing the council. He's been speaking to my colleague, Parkway Sipaka Wilson. We are talking, when people accuse us of bias, it is their subjective view that we have not been even handed with political parties. Now, I'm saying that our role is not issued denunciations from time to time. It's a misreading of our central role, which is really mediatory. And therefore, take what we have done in the Code of Conduct. If from the very beginning we have said that, oh, this party has a God that vigilante, which has done this, we condemn it, and so on and so on, without <clears throat> involving the others in a, a protracted process and a delicate process of negotiation, we never have got this code of conduct. So we are mandated, if you look at the provisions, I would like you to look at the provisions which I've quoted in my speech. I'm sorry we're not here. You know, we are, we are not <clears throat> condemning this. We are biased and so forth. This, allegation of bias has been made by both parties. Do you know that? Over the years, over the years, they have been made by both parties. Whenever each party feels that their case is not getting an earring or the other side is not con being condemned, then they say peace council. But it is not the function of the peace council to issue, you know, denunciation left and right. We are to resolve. Council also inaugurated a 10-member committee to superintend over the implementation of the roadmap and code of conduct signed by the political parties to deal with the threat of political militia. Senior Research Fellow at Ida Kwisi Jonas says monitoring team is poised in the execution of its mandate in spite of allegations of bias. So much partisanship in our democracy is that it doesn't matter what report you come out with somebody will always call you, you are supporting, uh, from what you, the way you spoke, I, I think you support SNYS, but as patriots, we should, we have accepted, the, we have undertaken to, 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 to do this monitoring, and I think we shouldn't look over our shoulders. We should do the work as diligently, as, as passionately as possible, regardless of what people say. But you, you have to say that, um you've already even failed um, with this inauguration because the political parties, as you mentioned, very partisan very, society. Very, 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 very partisan. And, and so... And, and they are becoming more and more partisan and polarizing the society all the time. But believe you me, looking at the members, the composition of this monitoring committee, we are going to do the work dispassionately, objectively, without looking over our shoulders. And that was your election headquarters. And still to come in this bulletin, Joy News blows the lead off a scheme through which state-owned produce buying companies are fleeing cocoa farmers of thousands of cities by adjusting weighing scale kilos. What's the readings? I know that cocoa is supposed to be weighed at 64 kilograms. No, I weigh cocoa here at 67 kilograms. All of this plus business coming up shortly. Hello everyone, I am Sandra Isinamath and as always I'm here for business. In our first story tonight, CEO of Volkswagen, Jeffrey Pefra, is assuring second-hand car dealers their presence in Ghana would not kill their operations. Speaking at the launch of the first batch of VW locally assembled cars, Jeffrey Pefra says the company would rather transfer knowledge to the local workforce to make them viable in the automobile space.
basically here to witness the launch or the outdooring of VW cars assembled right here in Ghana. And uh, so far, a number of four cars, uh, among them is Passat, VW Passat, Tiguan, and uh, a couple of other brands. CEO of VW Ghana, Jeffrey Pepper, says they are in talks with some financial institutions to assist automobile financing schemes. According to him, the cost of locally assembled cars will be less compared to the fully imported car. Newly assembled cars have a starting price of 60,000 Ghana cities. Uh, for assembly uh, locally, we really have a, the cost is really a very low cost compared to buying car from Europe and in importing here uh, because the government has also support with the tax waivers and things and we don't have to transfer the taxes to uh, before we having an import taxes on it, and the import taxes are at the moment also on a lower rate. So it makes the prices also go down, and it's a fantastic prices I think uh, all of us uh, could be able to afford. The CEO further assured local car importers and second-hand car dealers that their operations will not hamper their businesses, but rather VW will transfer technical knowledge to book them a place in Ghana's automobile space. All this uh, second-hand and uh, operators that there are a lot of things going on, we're not going to take their business. We are open to work with them and we're going to transfer technology and also knowledge to them. The Trade and Industry Minister Alan Chirimantin believes the presence of these automobile giants will help the country to make some savings on the Ghana's foreign exchange. It is also creating an opportunity for us to earn significant amounts of foreign exchange and it is the foreign exchange that we end that will stabilize our local currency i am fred duo reporting for joy business certainly some good news for the automobile industry but away from that about eighty-five thousand businesses in ghana are still closed down due to the coronavirus pandemic this was featured in the COVID 19 business tracker survey by the statistical service oh. of ghana charles Aite has the rest of the story According to the COVID-19 Rapid Survey Business Tracker highlights by the Ghana Statistical Service, over 115,000 businesses have either permanently or temporarily closed down across the country. Here's government statistician Professor Samuel Kobuna Aining. Clearly, one of the major issues that led to closures of businesses was the partial lockdown in Greater Accra and Greater Kumasi and indeed some pockets of the central region. Once we had partial lockdown, what that meant was that businesses naturally in these areas had to close down. Indeed, they had to close down involuntarily. The tracker also reveals that more than 45,000 workers have lost their jobs during the partial lockdown, with those in accommodation and food sector badly hit. So far, more than half a million workers have also had their wages reduced. The accommodation and food subsector recorded the highest draft in sales. So although our, our bus masked the effect of the accommodation and food subsector, indeed the accommodation and food subsector recorded the highest de decline in sales to the tune of 57%. Despite some respite granted businesses by government with the 600 million stimulus package, close to 131,000 businesses revealed that they still had challenges accessing finance, with over 60% calling for subsidized interest rates. Parliament approved host country agreement for the African continental free trade area. Join me for the details in the second part of business. But after the break, we have sports news with Gary Alston. <laughs> For staying with us on Joy News Prime, I'm Gary L. Smith with the sport. Barring any unforeseen events, the Court of Arbitration for Sport will communicate its ruling of the much awaited Wilfred Krikose versus GFA case tomorrow. Muftar Nabila Abdullah has been doing has been going through the legal documents filed by both parties at CAS ahead of the final. Palma was disqualified from the elections because of his failure to pay 10% of the transfer fee of Joseph Pencil and his comments that Ghana failed to qualify for the World Cup in 2018 because of government's decision to stop the football governing body from making indemnity payments. Ose appealed the decision at the Court of Arbitration for Sport, accusing the non-defunct normalization committee who acted as the elections committee of selective justice. The GFA were invited by CAS to provide 
a response. India defines the normalization committee through its lawyer, now Odefole Norte, accused Palmer of breaching Article 19 of the FIFA Code of Ethics, which talks about conflict of interest. According to the committee, Jose Cueco is owing the association he sought to hurt, and that amounts to conflict of interest. They added that the Tamayut owner is the authorized official for the documents available to the Ghana Football Association, and he is mandated to enter into legally binding agreements on behalf of the club as he is the executive chairman and president of the club. In further defense, the normalization committee told Cass Palmer is a proponent of corruption and bribery because he suggested Ghana failed to qualify for 2018 World Cup tournament because the Ministry of Youth and Sports refused to pay bribes to influence the outcome of games played by the Black Stars. Hence, he is not a person of high moral integrity. Lawyers of the FA said, and I quote, it would be unfortunate at this point to put our football fortunes in the hands of persons such as the appellant, unquote. The qualification requirements placed on aspirants, especially to presidential positions, is designed to avoid putting the GFA in the hands of persons with moral aptitude and lack of proven integrity. The football governing body also told Cars that they have no jurisdiction to hear the case, but this claim was rejected by the sports court who exercised jurisdiction over the matter. The GFA on June 29, 2020, signed documents accepting the ruling of Cars having jurisdiction over the matter. And it's time for showbiz. Becky's here with the very latest. Mm. Hi, Becky. Hello to you. Aisha. How are you, Miss Black and White? Mm. <laughs> I Hi, love thank your dress, you. Becky. Oh, thank you so much. Look at me blushing. <laughs> you can't see me blushing. But Aisha, let's congratulate Samini mm -hmm. uh, because he's uh, he's just gotten uh, an ambassadorial deal. Okay. Uh, yes, the FBN Bank, uh, Ghana. Oh, F and F and B yeah. Bank, yes, mm -hmm. uh, of Ghana has announced the signing of the award-winning uh, reggae and dancehall recording artist, songwriter, and performer Samini as ambassador of its new product, Quick Banking. Samini will be featured in a gripping integrated advertising campaign for the Quick Banking. Yes, uh, the product which will run on uh, radio, uh, print, and online channels. So, uh, congratulations to Samini. Congratulations uh, to right Samini. there. But Aisha, you know that the already video, we, we, we can't stop talking about oh it. Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. Yes. It is. Yeah, but let's talk about the people who actually, uh, uh, you know, worked on the, on, on the, the video. They did a marvelous and, job. You know, and, and also the, some of, you see, we are all talking about Shatawale. The video about. was not shot together. Shata did his differently and beyonce did hers and how they were able to merge the two yeah. to look so real like they were together it's, it's, it's amazing i mean it's it's but wonderful. do you know that we had dancers from ghana yes I, yeah I, so, I know how. so so i mean do you want to know about the, the, those tell dancers? me about it yeah so we've been uh, talking to them about it and uh, dance god lloyd who is actually the leader of the dance group says that their price have shot up so oh by all you know means, after that all, <laughs> all right yeah that was uh dance god lloyd right there i am envious yeah you have to learn how to dance uh, we have to recruit him to learn by the way they, 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 they dance. danced beautifully in that yeah. video and i love it we should I can also stop watching We'll also go and feature yeah, we'll Rihanna's do. video. Oh, yeah, yeah. By all means, that's all cool. Thank you so much for bringing us. Anytime, Aisha. Becky. Now to the rest of our stories. And President Ekofuado has today unveiled the first set of locally assembled Volkswagen vehicles in federance of government's industrialization agenda. The vehicles, which were to have hit the market earlier, missed the outdooring schedule of March this year due to the outbreak of COVID-19. But after a series of reviews, the vehicles are ready for the market. My colleague Manuel Kranting was there for Joy News. This is a major fest for Ghana. A Volkswagen vehicle assembled here, thousands of miles away from Germany, where the global car maker pioneered its brand in 1937. Today's official launch of Volkswagen in Ghana is another milestone for us in Ghana and also for the company Volkswagen. At the plush Kempinski Gold Coast Hotel, the Tijuan, Passat, Amarok and Terramont are paraded in all of their glory. Of Volkswagen Ghana, 100% subsidiary of Volkswagen. Jeffrey Pepra, who we have appointed as the CEO, will head Volkswagen Ghana. Universal Motors Limited, 
who has been a Volkswagen vehicle importer in Ghana since 2005, has been granted the assembly contract for the first phase of the project. The Universal Motors assembly facility has an installed capacity to assemble about 5,000 units per annum, dependent on the market demands. With properly structured automotive policies in place, the Sub-Sahara Africa region has the potential to develop into an automotive growth market in the coming years with the necessary political will, which we have found in the government of Ghana. This is the first of many outings for the global car maker, according to government, as part of a grand agenda to make Ghana a major hub for the automotive industry in West Africa. The president, in enthusiasm, saying this is a curtain raiser in the country's industrialization drive. The assembly and ultimately the production of VW vehicles in the country. There were many who expressed doubts about the feasibility of such an assembly plant being established in Ghana. And there were those who, for narrow partisan considerations, described this announcement as nothing but a hoax which would never see the light of day. Two years on, we've confounded the doubting Thomases, and I'm happy to be here this morning to launch officially the first Volkswagen vehicle that has been assembled in our country. It is a good day, a very good day for Mother Ghana. But this is coming on the back of a harsh reality. Ghana is a huge market for used vehicles. This new plan by government has faced stiff opposition from importers whose businesses will be the most hit by the arrival of global heavyweights like VW. But today, Trade Minister Alan Kojo Tremantin, who has been leading the implementation of this industrialization drive, has allayed fears. It is going to help reduce our import bill. Ghana, on the average, has an import bill of over 10 billion US dollars per annum. In 2018, our import bill was 12 billion US dollars. And our 30 leading imports constitute about 57% of this amount. Just 30 commodities imports. Now, out of these 30, the most significant ones, the top three, is led by the importation of transport vehicles, both passenger and transport uh, goods vehicles. And so there's absolutely no doubt that this effort of the government, together with the private sector, is going to help us save scarce foreign exchange resources. But it was starting as a dream in 2018 with one crucial meeting between the President of Ghana, His Excellency Nanadu Danko Kufuado, and the Chancellor of Germany, Angela Merkel. This is a product of that dream. A locally assembled VW Termont by automobile giant Volkswagen. It has the fuel capacity of 3.6 and a horsepower of 276. This right here is a product made, or if you like, assembled right here in Ghana. For Joy News, Manuel Cranting. And in the studio, my name is Aisha Ibrahim. Engineers working on the Pokwasi interchange say they may not be able to complete the entire project by the October deadline. When government cuts out for the commencement of the interchange, it was expected to be completed in April 2020. However, the project completion date was extended after it was expanded into a 40 year resident. Engineer Bimpon attributes this delay to what he says are technical challenges and problems associated with the COVID-19 pandemic. Nancy M. F. Dosi was there in our report. A groundbreaking ceremony at Pukwiasi on the 3rd of July 2020 to begin the construction of the Pokwase interchange at ACP Junction 
in the Gao West municipality of the Greater Accra region. The interchange, according to Senior Minister Yao Safumafo, who represented the president, was to ease traffic and improve urban mobility of residents within the project zone. We are about to perhaps cut a sword of one of the most important interchanges in this country. In December 2019, President Okufuado visited the site where engineers assured him work will be completed in October 2020. Our construction work. So uh, what we have here are the piers and that's what you can see, you know, in your view here. And then some, so these are some views. So when this is completed, when you're on the Accra Kumasi Road, this is what you see. You have the second tier the third tier and then the fourth tier. With barely two months to the deadline, the news team decided to take a tour the project site. Safety helmets on, reflectors and hand gloves, all in line with standard safety procedures at the site. Steadily, we climbed the stairs till we reached 22 meters above the ground. <laughs> We're actually standing on the tier four of this project, which is supposed to connect um, Awoshi to Kwabenya. Resident engineer Kwabena Bimpong said the project has faced several setbacks, including the coronavirus pandemic. The structures on the road, uh, hawkers, and all these people was a major challenge. Now, the diversion of the road, this is a main, the main Accra Kumasi road. Over 40,000 vehicles ply this road each day. Now, to move these vehicles without causing major traffic is only going to take a miracle because, you know, the Accra Kumasi Road has always been a traffic, you know, and that is why we are constructing this road. So that was, I would say, you know, the management of the traffic. When the COVID came, we decided that was sometime in March when there was a lockdown. The, we decided that nobody should travel because, you know, we have a lot of itinerant uh, workers. For about two, three months, we had a reduction of over 100 workers. And that really caused a major setback. He also revealed that they will not be able to complete the entire project by the stipulated October deadline. It's a challenge, but then we are determined to meet this deadline. As, but not to complete the entire project. Okay. Not to complete the entire project by you know, October. At least all the left hands or the ramps should be ready. You know, by during our visit, heavy vehicular traffic on the stretch was noticeable, but engineer Bimpong was emphatic that after the project's completion, there will be free flow of traffic. When this project is completed, they will be on the right-hand side, which is the service road, okay? And that service road has a um, bus base. Okay. But again, at the end of the day, it is all about enforcement. The Pokwase interchange is said to be the second fourth-year interchange in Africa after the Ebklot interchange in South Africa. Residents of Ga Odumasi, Oshiman, in Sakina and other areas in and around Pokwase say they are disappointed in President Ekufuado and his government for unfulfilled promises to fix their roads. Some disappointed citizens there who spoke to Jury News PC and I also say the roads have seen rise in premature births and miscarriages in pregnant women. They say uh, they vowed not to vote as doing so for decades is yet to yield results. There is more in the following report. Holes in the roads are not a new development in Pukwase, a suburb of Accra under the Gan West Municipal Assembly. I'm currently squatting before one, the size of a small pool, and filling about a third of the roads here at the Pukwasi Udumase Junction. Hundreds more like this are littered across the community. <laughs> The stretch lasts for over 800 kilometers. That's some 30 minutes drive or so, lasting all the way from the Pokwase Odumase Junction to Amasaman Circle and Sawam Kotoku Obeyeye, Dobro, and many other environs, including Awushi Bayard, all right here in Accra. Uh, one thing that you will notice is that rattling sounds from car bumpers, heartaches, backache, um, sweat, heat, and dust are usually highlighted 
highlights of the driving experience on these routes. The worst or the shocking news is that we are not even yet at the part of the route where the potholes are the steepest. This part of the road harbors potholes so large that it has become a temporary pond for all drivers it's that seek good. to get to the other side. It's not good. I'm going to speak to some of the residents here, the users of the road, and how they feel about it and how long this problem has occurred here. Most of our minders lose their pregnancies because of this condition of the road. The road is very rough, very bad. And the time that we located to this place, that was a year later. And we heard about many murders have been committed here. People have been robbed, and motor riders, and even market women. Some of them, they have been robbed. Some yes. of them, they have been killed. So please, we are apologizing to the president yes. that you should plead. Let the people to come and construct our road for our end. But if this road is not constructed, we will never vote. We won't vote because we are fed up. We won't. As some American say, yeah, I'm not some of my gangs, I want to die. I want to remind President Akufuado he has deceived us. He was here last November and promised to construct our roads within three weeks. If the roads are not fixed, he will lose the elections. He promised our roads will be tarred before his next visit. I wonder how he will do that now when it's just three months to elections. Residents here are not respected as citizens. Many patients die before reaching the Oduman Hospital. Women have had miscarriages due to the bad roads. Some have bled to death in vehicles. I want President Ekufuado to know I am a full member of the NPP. But if things don't change this year, I will not vote. Frank Tete is assemblyman for the Nsakina electoral area, which includes Ga Odumasi, Oshuman, and Ablikuma Abasi. He assured residents works on roads will soon be done. You know, let's, as you can see, the road network within my electoral area is fairly bad. And um, as we speak now, we are doing something about it. At the short places for us, things will be done very well from this we're going. The road will, the road, at least, the, the main roads will be, will be in shape from this we're going. Enjoy News Prime, we'll take a break and bring you more in business. Welcome back to the second part of business. Parliament has approved the host country agreement between Ghana and the African Union for the establishment of the African Continental Free Trade Area Secretariat in Accra. A report by Parliament's Foreign Affairs Committee says Ghana will secure a premises for the Secretariat as well as provide the necessary security. Foreign Affairs Minister Shelley Ayokop Bochwe told Parliament between 100 and 150 Ghanaians will gain employment opportunities at the Secretariat. The AU process from inception to the signing of the after agreement and the host country agreement um, today has ended up in Parliament and what we are doing is opening the door for the Secretariat to start operations. Mr. Speaker, the Secretary General and his team, the first team to kickstart operations, will arrive in the country sometime this month. Indeed, it is true that we had to postpone it from March to August, and also even the operations of this, uh, the Secretariat, the trading, um, has been postponed to January. But we are on course and we believe that this will happen very soon despite the delays that have been caused by the 
COVID-19 pandemic. Parliamentary correspondent Joseph Opoku Gapo joins me via Zoom for an update on that. Thank you so much for joining me, Joseph. What are the other key provisions in that agreement in terms of what will be Ghana's benefits as a host nation? Uh, so a number of them. First of all, uh, the secretariat being established here in Ghana, they will enjoy a number of benefits from us as a country, including the fact that, um, as you indicated, their premises will be set up and furnished. Uh, the secretariat will be given a legal personality with the capacity to enter into a contract and acquire and dispose various property here in Ghana. That's also listed in the agreement. Additionally, uh, government will ensure that those who work at the secretariat are offered various diplomatic statuses. There will be the situation where they would enjoy privileges and immunities, just as they would have enjoyed if they were working with the Organization of African Union once they are here in Ghana. Um, additionally, um, we will see a situation where the secretariat will be able to freely purchase various currencies through the authorized channels here in Ghana and transfer them. Uh, the secretariat will be exempt from any direct or indirect taxes, except for charges on utilities, and also charges on payments like SNIT. And additionally, the expectation is that this secretariat, when it's eventually established, it would work through, to, to, you know, with government through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So those are some of the expected conditions under which the secretariat would actually operate here in Ghana. But on the issue of job creation, that's one thing that MPs pushed a lot in terms of likely benefit for the people of Ghana. Uh, the indication from the committee's report is that majority of the staff at the Secretariat, uh, those who will be doing administration, finance, and other issues, are people who would have to be, majority of them would have to be Ghanaians. And the minister put the figure of the likely number of employees that would see there, as far as Ghanaians. She, she clearly stated between, that between 100 yeah. and 150 Ghanaians will be employed at the Secretariat. Right. Well, that's quite good news. But I'm sure she spoke about the impact of the pandemic on the free trade area. How bad did she say the situation is for member states? Uh, she makes the point that they were targeting to begin the full operationalization of the secretariat in July this year, uh, but now they are being forced to push it all the way to July. Just to uh, make a point, for example, about what the committee uh, report indicated, they said that the situation with COVID-19 has made it impossible for the movement of the secretariat and the support staff to Ghana to begin the full operationalization because we know the country's borders are closed. But the minister indicated that conversations are ongoing and the necessary steps are being taken so that by the 1st of January, they would have done all the necessary backroom activities so the uh, operationalization would begin. All right, right Joseph, I'm grateful for that update from Parliament. But how, how we add, we end business tonight, log on to myjournaline.com for a slug business for more. And if you missed today's big stories, you can catch the highlights on QuickBase with me on my social media handles at Sandra and I'm on Facebook, at Sandra and I'm one on Twitter, and I am C underscore official on Instagram. Stay home, stay safe, and stay beautiful. And thanks so much. Four.